guys, welcome to our podcast. Um, so here we've got Lester Roberts, yeah. we've got Rochelle Daphne, and yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to talk about, um, okay, a lot of things, a lot of things. We're also going to talk about Tilu. So I hope you guys are ready. Are you guys excited? Of course. I'm so excited Always. to be Why here. are you excited? Um, I didn't think that part. <laughs> you don't think, you guys. You don't think. <laughs> nah, don't talk to me like that. But uh, yeah, I think I always like expressing thyself. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like Guza's always like talking too much. So here now. But I don't want any. I don't want any hard questions. Me too. You have a good girl. As for me, I'm excited to be on a podcast. On your podcast. Yeah, because. You've been meaning to invite us. It's yeah. an yeah. honor to, to be eyed. on my podcast. Because ah. Mans doesn't invite you. We think mm. he doesn't rate us. That's the problem. Nah, I respect you guys. We were supposed to have our uh, iconic body here. Uh, we were, the topic, okay, the main topic is like light skin, dark skin, like the dynamics on how like people get treated depending on their skin color. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it. But I think I'll advocate for dark skin. Since I'm the only dark skin here. But um, it's not like... But it's, it's not an argument. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. But can you really know what, what it is dark yeah. skin girls go through? Because I mean, like, it's all the hype. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. You know, like, a black man. You know, there's all the hype around black men. I think so I think for you, like, I don't know if you're going to be able to understand. Yeah, because also the conversation is about... It will also comprise of the fact that black men would rather go for light-skinned women we want to know how black women feel about that yeah so i don't know if i think we'll make arrangements to have maybe a part two of um colorism with when iconic body can make it or try find another guest that's like dark skin but i will give insight okay i was just joking about representing dark skin but i think i'll give insight based on like observation and like my own personal understanding but I think we, even you guys can have observed certain things. You've got dusky friends. <laughs> no, it's different. Yeah, you can't really. You mm, can't. Because well. even, even the dark skinned girls will be like, mm, I like your skin. Mm, but if I was that color, mm, if I was you. So I don't, I don't think I have any dark skinned friends that can understand what, what it's like to be me. Because like dark skinned girls that I know, are like, oh, I, d I wouldn't change myself, but look, you've got more opportunities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when it comes to like male attention or whatever it is. Yeah, I think the first thing I want us to talk about before we get into detail is like just colorism. Like there's actually a lot of people who don't know what colorism means. To me, colorism is um, like just division and like people getting treated, uh, looking at how somebody gets treated uh, with influence of the color of their skin, right? Uh, I don't think it's like racism, colorism, like you can both be black or African or Zambian, but because you're different skin color, you get treated differently. Or like maybe, like maybe somebody light skin is treated better than dark skin or somebody dark skin can be treated better than somebody who's light skin. I think for guys, there's also been that stereotype of uh, light skin guys are soft, you know, yeah. team light skin, like Drake. Yeah. Drake's always getting like yeah. roasted. And then dark skin is like, yeah, dark, dark skin guys are dark, like, you know, they're tough. So yeah. I feel so, like a that, lot of black people are still trapped. They're still enslaved. They still feel like um, the lighter color is more superior. So I yeah. feel like that's really where it stems from. I was just, I found that like interesting. It's an interesting fact, but I don't think that that's the main, um, the main underlying issue. But again, I don't know. These are just my assumptions from what I've seen. I think, I think it has a lot of historic factors over how people with lighter skin are favored and to be honest with you, there's an undeniable privilege that comes with it. Even as a light-skinned person, there's a lot of privileges that come with being light-skinned. It's you, you can argue with your dark-skinned friends where they're like, no, you got it because you're light-skinned. No, you get this because it, it's, it's undeniable. There is, Why? There is privilege there. Why because the privilege? of the historical factor that westernized beauty, like even... Uh, even just if you, if you, the closest example I can bring is like, for example, 
the idea of a, um, a house slave, right, in America, right? They, it's more digestible, even in our media, our modern day media, it's more digestible for you to say that you, there's black people in this movie or they're black characters only now that they're bringing in more actual dark toned people into the media. But since back a day, it's been more digestible to put a dark skinned black person for white people's consumption, yeah, for I the think, world's consumption. I so therefore yeah. you as a child growing up who is black, there's no representation. So you're looking and you're like, no, I wish I could be like her because she's on TV. So Barbie, yeah. dark skin yeah. people shouldn't go and watch Barbie. Yeah. But no. now you see, there's no, there's no representation for that because it's I'm something joking, that has you. been recognized. And it's like, it's actually colorism in the media. And what do people consume most? Most It's media. Yeah. So I, I blame the media mainly. I think, yeah, obviously from like historical down to, then it continued into the media. Like Disney Channel, guys, like for 90s kids and a few of the 2000s grew up on Disney Channel. And it was like, you know, uh, a lot of like white people. Like very few here, were, there were very few black people. And then um, even if you didn't have like Disney Channel, like you had ZNBC or TV2, whatever you were watching, if it was Western, it was primarily like Caucasian. Yeah. And yeah. then they were always like, yeah. they invest a lot in their media and how they have a head start, a 200 year head start, if I'm not mistaken. So they are more like, okay, in movies, they are more like organized, more ahead. They're the innovators, they're the creators. So we, are, we, we went through a phase where we idolized white people. Then from there, Caucasian people. Then from there, we went on to any, anyone who looks white or lighter just comes off as superior. But there was also the division again during like the slave times where there was the colored people, even in the US, the colored people, whites only, coloreds only, and blacks only. So I think that's also something that really caused like this division um, that I've, causes colorism. I've heard, I've heard you, both of you guys, talking a lot about um, white people, black people, all of the stuff that has gone on and stuff. But this is also something that happens in the Asian community. Indians also do that. Um, I remember. I, I remember. I was watching Z World. No one should come for me. No one should you watch, come for me. You're watching what? <laughs> first of all, first of all, it, it was it was it was one of my down times. I was young. I was young. No, no, no. You were. I was bored. young. You nah. were bored. No, I know. I know what I, she's I dealing young. with this, and I and I know exactly what she's about to say. But go on. So, like, it was a thing where, you know, like, Indians, it's the dark Indians, the, the lighter Indians. So, it was a movie about this dark Indian, and she was failing to find a husband because she was darker than the, the other women. And then also Chinese people in those days, they would literally paint themselves white. Yeah. Like, that would be their makeup, because that was perceived as beautiful. And, and even and now... Rich, yeah. Yes, yes. And even now, some of the products that they use are, like... Like whitening of so when Asian people use uh, whitening cream. You creams. know, it, India maybe, is actually maybe, the maybe biggest nothing. bleachers in the world. Really? Yeah, they, that, they, that they create know. the most. They consume the most bleaching products in the world. After that is Jamaica, Ooh. India. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yo, that's crazy. So yeah, I feel like I'm just wondering: is there something else? And what what is it that place? Like, when did it all begin? Because it seems like it's not just. Africa. It's not just one country, one place. No. So I don't know when exactly it happened that people started perceiving, saying, the lighter you are, the more beautiful. Do you guys feel like, um, like people who are lighter are like more beautiful than people who are darker? Can I be honest? Yeah. Wait, what was the question? Do you guys feel like <laughs> people who are lighter, whether male or female, are more attractive because they are lighter? Um, no. Okay, so I for don't. me... Um, okay, I'll just be completely honest. Um, so as I was growing up, I also grew up with this same thing. Like, I would notice, like, um, people telling me, oh, you're nice. And you know, like, the compliments when when you're walking, people would say, oh, I like your color. Yes. You know, Yellow like, bone. Color like, and okay? you know what I mean? So stuff like that. And then, you know, as you grow up, if those are the compliments you're getting, you start thinking that that's where your beauty yeah. lies. So I thought, um, um, as I was growing up, there was a time when I thought my beauty was in the color of my skin because that was what I was getting complimented on. And um, 
you know, when you're growing up, you don't know anything. This is the first time you're experiencing this. So when people start telling you, oh, you have really nice eyes, you know, that's when later on you start noticing that you have nice eyes. It's so, me no one complimented me as a child. But anyway. Because you were a brick. But I moved. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was growing up, I started perceiving saying the color of my skin is like what, what makes me beautiful. And then like a lot of these, um, I don't know if you can call them activations, mental, whatever, yeah. where people are like, no, like black lives, like have you seen black women? And then that's when I started realizing that, I, it, it sounds crazy to me now, but then that's when I realized that beauty isn't actually in the color of your skin. So now when I, when I look at a black woman, to be honest, I feel like just um, like, what is it? I feel like African, like whether you're mixed, whether you're black, but like black for white, for, for like the Americans, you know what I mean? I feel like personally for me, like those are the most beautiful people. Black people, wait, dark skin or like? Like all types of black, as like, long as yeah. you have some kind of black in you. Because you know, so like, you guys like, are even, saying even other like the idea, not... for me, the idea of colorism, right? I know colorism exists, but I feel like it, it exists in different spectrums. Like, for example, in Zambia, right? It feels more racist. Like, for, sorry, for me, it was the opposite in high school. No one told me, oh, your skin is so beautiful, whatever. Like, I never, I never thought of, oh, my skin is what makes me beautiful. For me, I was bullied. No, for sure. Oh, I was also bullied, hey? Yeah. You're bullied I'll, for what? For, for being light like, skin. Mm, cap. <laughs> I swear. Stop the no, cap. Because no, automatically, right skin. automatically when you walk I in a room, right, bro, they think that oh, because she's she she thinks she's all of this because she thinks bro? I'm not even thinking about the color of my skin. You're thinking about the color of my skin. Bro, preach or show. Like you think I'm walking in here thinking, yeah, no, I'm better than everybody. I don't even think I'm looking at these other girls. This other girl can dance. This other one yeah, can sing. Yeah, no, this for one sure. can draw. Me, I can't do anything. By that time, I didn't discover all of my talents. Yeah. But but I was bullied and then people are like it's just it's weird it's crazy that it's you cra went through a similar experience to me and we had never spoke I had no yeah. idea that that was what was going yeah. on so for me it's what happened growing in that kind of environment yeah. so like the spectrum is different because even in the states I feel like we would be normal black girls in the states yeah for sure you're black there you're black no, yeah, for sure. you're black on an international level for sure you must even be mopping and Sweeping. No, I said we don't do those things. Picking. You see, I do That's that every single day in my household. In Zambia, there's light skin. Privilege. Nah, me, I nah. even go to the village. We me, cook, I, we clean everything on the fire. Okay, for me, for me, I think um, just from observation. Now, I'll start with observation. Like um, growing up, there's been like times where okay, this is when I was like a teenager. Hormones are kicking in. There are times I was like attracted to dark skin like dark skin girls um for me dark skin i just i just had this thing where like i had a type which is dark skin when she's there's a time when i was like into like caucasian girls like blue eyes there was a type you know like the one from the fume 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 for sure <laughs> then there was a time for indian the Disney princesses you know what i mean with the there's also a time for indian. yeah i went like an indian face i had a crush on like some girl she was called zara at my at my school Shout out Zara. Yeah, <laughs> if you're, uh, I did like a huge crush on her. Then from, I, but yeah, it was just Indian, like dark skin, even light skin. But like when I started getting older, it was like a lot of like light skin. Cause like guys, a lot of guys, you know, African guys, Zambian guys, it's always like yellow bone. It's and they push it. Yellow they bone. Push. So I was, I was brainwashed and pushed yeah. towards like, you have to try, aspire to get a light skin girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? But let me tell you this. When I was trying hard to get like a light skinned girl is when I never used to like find myself interacting with light skinned girls. When I got older and now like it didn't matter and I understood that like everyone, it's about the personality, sense of humor. I thought you were going to say something else. Yeah, it's about the personality, sense of humor, you know, like the attitude, the energy. It's about the energy, the aura. When I started like and I understood that is when I'd find like a variety of just like different, like both like light skin, dark skin, Indian, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's when I learned that like, yo, like I've gone through those phases because of different reasons and going towards the light skin. A lot of guys can testify this because even when I ask questions on social media, people are always like, it's like a trope, it's an achievement. When you're yeah, like light and I hate that so much. Yeah, yeah. and also I, I feel like it's also the way that some light-skinned girls carry that privilege. 
because I said already, like, th- there's an undeniable privilege, right? Obviously, even if a guy doesn't want you, you go there in Zambia, especially with the mentality, sure. and you be like, hi, whatever. So you're gonna be like, oh, a light skin chick. Sure. I'm gonna take her home, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But there, there's a representation of the way light-skinned girls are perceived. Some light-skinned girls will act ratchet because maybe they'll call themselves coloreds. Sorry. <laughs> I think we can, we can pick this from Jamila's character in, okay. in This is Lusaka. She's the stereotype of what colored girls are. Ratchet, you know I mean? ratchet, rude. What? You even forget Toxic. because because guys even forget they're like, ah, you're colored, you don't fight. Because me, I don't fight. Okay, sometimes. Uh, but- are we sure, Rochelle? <laughs> I don't, I don't fight. Sure? Have you guys heard but- about the dirty colors? Yes. What but does it mean? First of all, first of all, I'm not going there. <laughs> I heard that from, from Lesnar, by the way. <laughs> We're not going there. What does that mean, like a dirty color? So I also the, just the, heard it from someone. No. It's a stereotype. No, let me tell you. Because it does exist. I make fun there's of this sometimes. There's a stereotype of when she's like dirty shoes that she's a dirty color. <laughs> right? No, there's a stereotype. You know how um, we even have these colored jokes, even in the colored community, of when I grow up, I wanna be rich. I don't wanna be a mechanic. Are we in the same community? No, but you, yeah. Like, no, this is more. She, she's she's race. mixed race. Yeah, like. So, Lester Rob, like Lester Roberts. So know? yeah, this, this is one is Rochelle Daphne. Rochelle Daphne, but yeah, there's there's that stereotype like oh if when you grow up like the guys in the colored community are going to become mechanics, your mom is going to have a sausage and chips place down the road at Auntie Becky's there. She's even saying there. She she's <laughs> tapping in. She's tapping back in into the homeland. Yeah. No, but that's like that's the kind of thing that like. The category of a dirty color but well, that's not the conversation okay yeah. you're you're digressing yeah. <laughs> so um i would just like to go back to the point that you were on i feel like there's still so much that i can say uh you were talking about before like how you were bullied and stuff and yeah. blah 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 so i just wanted to also give my experience so for me i was the only light-skinned girl in my class and then it was like i was different you know so then, like, people would, like, come around me and, like, pinch me and stuff to see if I would turn red. Yes, that happened to yes. you, too? Ah, oh, so guys, that's so mean. Yeah, it, it was mean, but it was fun for, for them, them, at least. Behave, behave. We'll fight. I have trauma. But, um, yeah, so it was like this. Who beat you? So it's like, th- there's also this thing, and I feel like I also get a lot of, hate from like other females like like what you're talking about like people judge me before like they actually get to know me dark think, skin or like light skin or just everyone i don't think light skin people judge me i don't know i i don't have a lot of light skin friends majority of my friends are dark skin but before like initially like when i like walk into a room people are like she's stuck up yeah you know like she, she's, she's probably entitled. rich you yeah, know, she, she's probably really. Yeah. Rochelle complained about that one oh, like a nice lot. It happened. Everyone it, always thought like she just came from like riches because she's like. Good. Yeah. No, it's really bad. And that I skid. And then it's worse because guys think that they can like force themselves yes. on you or have you anytime because um, uh, light skinned girls are, you know, easy. Or like they are just used as, as sex objects yeah. and they're trophies. They're not really. Okay. I think I'm over exaggerating it, but I don't think you are though, but yeah. Some guys see it as oh no, like you just have to have her. It's like it's like you're more like a means, you know? It's cause when someone objectifies you, you're not really a person anymore. Yeah. So I've had situations where guys would like try to force themselves on me and when I'm like, leave me alone, they're surprised, like, ah, why are you refusing? Like th- this is what we do. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So it's like because also they've set this target on your back, like, oh no, you have to have a light skin. Some guys would go to crazy extremes to try to get that because they're trying to affirm something within themselves. So I think with anything, I think there's like pros and cons to everything. As Rochelle was saying, um, there is still like the fact that um, there are still some cons to being light skin. I mean, sorry, pros to being light skin, but I just wouldn't want to paint it off as, oh no, we're we're living the, yeah. So, 
I think that that's an important thing that like not many people talk about. Yeah. Most people talk about, um, oh no, like it's nice to be light skin. I have to bleach my skin. I have to do all yeah, of this. But there's... yeah, but before we get to the bleaching though, okay. Um, I like to give like a male perspective of how sometimes guys become super aggressive and they just lose it when they see a light skin girl. You know. Um, it just comes from a place of, like, for me, a lot of guys rarely, okay, the guys I know who have pursued, like, a light-skinned girl, most of them are not even in love with the girl. It's infatuation and object, objectification. Oh, look at you saying big words. You're growing up. You're growing up. Well done. Guys, yeah. we need to get it's, ob it's, it's obje objectification. Oh, so again. There we go. I just had to emphasize. One there. more time. One more time objectification wow anyway wow. on a more serious note like yeah they're just infatuated it's an object um it's an achievement yeah. and then maybe you find out you guys are not compatible in terms of your personalities your attitudes your perspective on life so i've seen like a lot of guys just really and i've seen a ripple effect where the a lot of like mixed girls or like light-skinned girls are broken because guys have really played with them yeah. and like like tossed them around and like you said they go to like serious lengths like the energy they give when they're pursuing like they're in love like i've seen it like whenever like like i'm with guys and he's pursuing like a light skin like it's like yeah you have to like first put your money there put everything like do whatever it takes to get her to submit to succumb to you and then you find you haven't even looked at things like are we compatible? Do we have this, like, her personality, does it match with mine? Yeah. Is she a good person? Am I a good person? And by the time you reach that stage, you're tired, you've used her sexually and everything, she's broken. So I've noticed now, like, a lot of light-skinned girls, you know, they have just this protective barrier now of, like, you know, like, they're always protective, like, yeah. they're always out here to get yeah, me, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and that, it, yeah. that also, it, com it comes back to kind of like a point that I was trying to get to when I was talking about um, how some girls, some colored girls have created a stereotype. So thank you for the build-up. Uh, you're welcome. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Objectification. <laughs> objectification. Because of that object objectification. Uh, uh, now you go and do... Don't let me go. Let me finish the okay, sentence. Okay, Take your time Jesus. with it. It's a bit, you know? Okay, thank ah. you. No, because he's a pro now. No, sure. guys, I almost... Okay, okay, anyway. So, because of that objectification... Wow. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay, <laughs> you guys are really going girls, in today. Like some of these girls I know are broken. Can't lie. Been there, you know. But then you, you, they lose themselves so much that they understand that they're a trophy. Then you black guys now who are now coming for them. They understand that, okay, me, I already know. I'm like this. Emotions shut off. Wait, when you, you already come know there, like she's an what? empty. I know some girls who are just shells. Yeah. Some like a lot of girls I know who are just empty shells. There's nothing that they know that they oh you're gonna buy me this. They even know the routine. They don't have to put work into like their personality they or intellect. Nothing. Substance because they know that the then skin you become, is enough. Then you become a stereotype because me guys will approach me and they're expecting to find an empty shell and I'm like I'm not the one. I'm, I'm not like the other girls. Mm -hmm. I've decided that I'm not empty. So guys, even if it's not light-skinned girls, even if it's just dark-skinned girls, guys, just fill your cups. Don't forget that you are a person just because people are objectifying you. I'm a person. You are a person. He's yeah, a person. People. Don't judge it. Yeah, work on yourself. Yeah, like true. there's a lot of girls. I'm sure even you, you know them. Empty, yeah. nothing there, nothing there. Yeah, I because think that's, that's that they're the price. price. Yeah, they've been. That's but can you really blame been. that on the guys, though? Yeah, you both parties kind of, have to blame. You kind of can because how many, how many times has a young girl, maybe if she started having boyfriends at a young age, how many times did she actually think, oh my god, this guy actually likes me? When you're young, I wouldn't know, bruh. Like girl. I haven't really dated. Okay, for me, who has been dating, I had my first boyfriend, what, 15 years old? Oh my God, we're getting vulnerable. But <laughs> I had my first boyfriend when I was 15 years old. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of things 
that I thought what a relationship, a healthy relationship should have been between the age of 15 to now. I mean, I've taken a break from relationships, like emotional relationships for some time. Yeah. But for, for me to understand... What do you mean emotional relationships? Emotional intelligence, um, like my mental strength to go through things, or even understanding, of, like even just when you're a teenager, some things you're very gullible to things that approach you. <laughs> things okay. that approach you. <laughs> yes, I know. I know people say better that chat, but things. Ah, that's a new word. To people that are even things, guys. Okay. There's a lot of things that approach I would you. have changed. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Because you're not emotionally built yet yeah. to understand what this person is chasing. Because even the way you're saying, the way guys come hard at these girls, it's mostly young girls. I think... As you get older, even these same light-skinned older women are like, I already know why this person is here. May I'll use this opportunity to do A, B, C, D, right? And make you money. And they make you money. But at the end of the day, I left empty. Young girls are gullible. By the time you get to your what, 25, they are broken. Yeah, what? Anyway, that's, that's, a, that's a whole different conversation. No, but that's a conversation I'd like us to have because I feel like people are getting broken at a young age now. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm looking at some of these girls, like, they're like 21, 20, 22. They are already finished. The speedometer is finished. You know what I mean? Like, like their energy is just gone. Like, they've been drained by so many guys. Type yeah, you know, say this type with your mileage. Like, okay, mileage? I'm not talking about the mileage, but like, I'm just talking about like emotionally, they are drained, and you can see now they're in relationships. Like, you know what? I'm attracted to men. I want to be with someone. I might as well make some money or some it. Uh. Can we can we say that the internet is to blame for that? Because yo, I was so shocked. Hey, I was so when I t yo, so I went home, right? Uh, and then I was talking to I was talking to my, my younger brother, and then I was talking to him, and then he already knew about what sex was and stuff. And I was like, at that stage, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess so. But like the thing is, all of these things are out there on the internet. You know what I mean? And I'm just thinking like by then, I like I was I was still under the impression that babies are bought from Shoprite. That was my entire childhood. I don't know. Did they also tell you that you came from shop, right? Me, they said. What did they say? Me, they said. Uh, no, they went to collect me at the hospital. They told my mom that I'm ready. But these people are so creative with these lies. They went to lives. get the, me at the hospital. Yeah, that's, that's where. That's where they make either. babies at the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was like, for real. Quite creative. The shop right one was creative. But I looked for my next younger brother for like a whole year until I realized they were lying to me. I was like, so so which aisle is the aisle for the babies? They say no, they only come out like once no. in a while and you have to talk to the manager. They tried that with me, but I think I was three years old when my baby sister was born. Mm -hmm. And I remember very vividly walking down the hospital corridor with other moms and their babies. So I knew in a sense, I didn't know like it came from sex or, or anything like that, but I knew that they came from the hospital and your mom is on the bed. I remember holding me, her like me. This. I was the only child, so that was I had that reference point for a long time. I, I thought like my mom was fine. Then they went and picked me. Like this is the one we one they made me. So I was like, oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Anyway, you were talking about your brother. Like, yeah. what did what what about him? No, I was just saying that like right now, like the kids they know stuff, man. Like. So you're talking about like, no, people are dating too soon and that's breaking them. But like, th that's inevitable. That's no, no. going to happen now. My point wasn't that dating too soon. I think I was talking about primarily um, girls who are objectified. I also want to put it out there that like very attractive brown and dark skinned girls are also getting like objectified. Yeah. And, like, also, especially with the social media. Especially like the, the, the thick babes. Yeah, if you have yeah. got nyash. No, it's crazy. You are a target. And then the problem is, it's nice to be the object of desire, yes. but you are objectified, and then you are prone to like a lot of guys just doing everything out of their way yeah. to, to, to just to smash, basically. Uh -huh. Just to be like, nah, that one, like, I have to go through that one. Uh -huh. And then by the time, by the end of everything, 
you you maybe you went through it when you were young and because of social media and also just like the the, the, the movies and the series that we watch right now i think i saw like my cousin my little cousin posting fatal attraction like 16 maybe 16 17 she's posting fatal attraction it's like yeah even I'm like, just wait, 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 posting wait, wait, wait. euphoria even like yeah like like, what like are you, know, why are you watching some euphoria? of my friends that like really young saying yo this like it's giving me euphoria vibes like what are you <laughs> doing watching euphoria wait like, wait, wait 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 hold on 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 <laughs> even uh um, what do you call it bridgerton i know it's like it's it's fun it's no, fun it's not bad. the sex scenes in bridgerton no they're not that bad to be honest it's six either way there's 13 year olds it's not that it's quite bad for okay it's not as bad as euphoria and uh fatal attraction and uh yeah like, yeah I but haven't even see, watched like, Fatal Attraction, but I've just seen. Everybody like, has some access scenes. to these things. So I'm but just with the, the media they're consuming. They are when you put all that together plus social media with like the soft porn that's on social media, yeah. where like you have to show something sexual whenever you post a picture for you to get uh, like, engagement, yeah, like yeah. good engagement. It's like already like creating this atmosphere where some of these young girls feel like they need to experiment sexually at a very young age yeah you know? and then the problem now comes with who are you experimenting with where is it leading to when it leads to nothing and you keep on doing that over and over and over again is when you find yourself by the time you're like 22 23 you're already numb yeah. to like interacting with like the opposite sex or trying to pursue anything you already use it's gonna end it's gonna end it's gonna end it'll end in tears fill up fill up fill up by the time it's time to think about marriage or anything hey that's why, like, Shana Brian on the previous episode I was asking you, like, will this marriage thing work? Uh, yeah. But anyway, so I've digressed from colorism all the way to, like, true, yeah, true, our true, generation. Yeah, but also, also in, in the sense of both, um, it depends also, like, on your genetics, but there's been conversations about how young African girls are more objectified than... Um, Western? Yeah. No, you're just black. Just, just black Afri- so African, like American? African girls. Just black girls. Even if you're light-skinned, black. But because we have different bodies, to be honest with you. You find in Zambia a 13-year-old looking at her, you're like, isn't this chick 16 years old? Yeah. Especially the ones now. I feel like Then imagine us, a, a Bali is chasing we, we your 13-year-old younger. sister. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because even me, I can't lie. Me, I've had hips since I was... 14 years old. Can't relate, Shem. <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> but like, that just gives you an idea of like how black girls are more objectified in the world in different communities because it's just, it's, it's our genetics. Okay, let's, let's bring it back to um, Zambia. <laughs> um, you played a character, Renee, yeah. in This is Lusaka. And for me as the writer, it came, it was inspired by how like light-skinned girls from like the copper bell when they come to LSK, LSK, it's like there's a transformation, and then we'll get to like that. I'm sure you also have like insight in terms of that. Like I've yeah. seen it with my eyes, where like a girl comes, she's not even a social media type person, you know, like she doesn't get involved, and then you start seeing at the club, start seeing at parties, chilling with different people. But I mean, she's exploring. I mean, she wants to try and like. She wants to try and live like the LSK lifestyle. So what, what, what would you say about that character? Like what's your perspective about like a light-skinned girl that has come from the Copper Belt to Lusaka? Um, is that a question for me also? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so like I was saying, like um, I keep on telling everybody that's watched This Is Lusaka that every character in Tilu you know as somebody who's like that, even I know Renee, even parts of Renee, uh, somebody I used to be at some point. For real? Uh, but you're not from the Copper Belt, right? You no, I'm not, I'm not from the Copper Belt. From the I was born in the Copper Belt, but I'm, I'm, I'm an LSK. So you're Renee, Renee. Renee. I'm an the LSK van. Ah, so you're Renee, Renee. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. When did you come to the soccer? Like when I was three weeks old. Oh. I've been in LSK. Yeah, Lusaka <laughs> baby trapping artist years. I'm a Lusaka baby. Yeah. But yeah, I know 
not really the church thing, but I know some girls. I have some friends from like high school. When, when they know and they land in Lusaka, it's house party after house party. I think they still do the same thing. And we're, we're this age now. But like since we were teenagers, they come to Lusaka, it's shampopo, it's shampopo. this, it's that. They go back, they're saints. And I'm speaking from colored girls. <laughs> Itwa is also starting to get really lit. Like yeah. I've, I've heard a few stories about like different people in Kitwe and stuff like that. Like they, there's also like a lifestyle is bring up in Kitwe. When I was there, I was seeing a lot of similarities. Like when I go to social and I go to like the mall and stuff. When yeah. I hear it's different stories. But the other thing with, is with Kopala people. The thing with Kopala people is that they think whenever they come to Lusaka and they're chilling on this tip and they're like, ah, you guys are copying us. But it's like, who's even coming to Kitwe all the time for us to say, for you to say that we're copying you all the time? Yeah. Like, what's your issue? I know this Kopala Lusaka war needs to stop. Yeah, mm. I just feel like it's so unnecessary. We're already so divided as Africans. Then you divide again. <laughs> as Africa. in, in, no, in. for sure. Because like the, the United States, it's an entire continent. But it's just like one country. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm saying the wrong yeah. thing. They have one language. In Zambia, we one have 62 languages in our one country. They may have one language, one car currency, but they also have different beliefs. Like, for example, like some states will be like, this is this place is for Christ. Like, for no, Christ? Yeah. gay rights. They call them the, com the conservatives. No, 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 sure. versus, the conservatives. The, like, this is the what? The conservatives and the... That's non-conservative. No, it's the opposite. I, I can't, forgot I it. I don't remember what it is. I forgot uh, it. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I, I it's do kind agree. of still a bit divided. There's no, some places no, where it's just more racist. Um, it, like, if, if you're like a bunch of people, there's always going to be division. Because it's not possible to be one person. Like, even just between the two of us. Like, even in our relationship there are going to be times when we clash the times when we oh sorry thank you <laughs> the, the times when like we clash so it's, it's it's unrealistic to expect like people to be in harmony all the time right but like what i'm saying is there already there's already that barrier regardless but now we have like the barrier of language also because like sometimes i'm working in the hospital and like i can't speak to some patients because maybe they speak like lunda you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't even know who's Lunda anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's Wait, like, there's Lunda? Yes. Lunda and like, Luba. Lunda and like, so, Luba I don't even know, like, Lozi, Those are like Tumbuka. The okay, Tumbuka is like a language. Tribes, is Tumbuka a tribe as well? Yes. But it's also from Malawi, Tumbuka. Yeah. My mom's Tumbuka. I just feel like we're so uh, divided as Africans. Anyway, guys, I would like us to talk about bleaching. Okay. But, but wait, 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 before we go there. We also have to talk about bleaching with guys. Guys, bleach. Yeah. Um, wow, man. Bleach. <laughs> um, wow, First man. of all, yes. Guys also bleach. So as we're having that conversation, don't forget to, to bring up the guys. Because we've talked about colorism, but we've only talked about the females. But there's also colorism. Okay, before we go to, to bleaching, let's talk about colorism with guys. So for no, me... No, no, no. I have a question for you. Yep. So um, do you like... What would you describe the scene of colorism with guys? Do you feel like you have the upper hand? Let me tell a story. Like from when I when I when I was growing up. When I was growing I was up, a babe. I was darker than I am now. Right now, I like the complexion I am. I'm not too light. I don't think I would want to be too light. Why? But also, I feel like I like brown. Like brown. are you bleaching? I'm not bleaching. Come on. So how are you, are you, how are you getting lighter? Are no. you taking the injection? My mom was like, <laughs> <laughs> guys, don't disrespect me. I'll remove, I'll mute your parts and you just you me on this podcast. That. I can actually. You can do that. I can. You see. We are this podcast. This is no. our Who podcast. Are you? Whatever. Anyway, so um, I like the tone I'm in. I think brown skin is like okay. Perfect. I enjoy being brown because um, I don't want to be light. I don't want to be dark. That's my preference okay. for how I look. But even though you are dark skinned, there's a lot of extremely beautiful, especially the models. Like that dark, dark, dark. They look really good. They look the really East, attractive. The East African dark. Both guys and, and, and girls. They look really, really good. You know what I mean? Uh, I also wouldn't mind having a child that's really, really dark. I feel like I'm already know this one I'm pushing him to become a model. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I also wouldn't mind having somebody that's like really light. But I'm just saying for me, I like brown, like the color brown. I like to look brown. I like the, and I think I've become brown and like I've embraced it. You know what I mean? So, 
Um, How I'm did not, you become brown? Huh? I became brown. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> let me explain. I became brown okay. because my mom is light. Okay. On my mom's side, they're like really, really light. And on my, my dad's side, they're not like dark, but like my dad's dark. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think when I was young, I looked um, like my dad. And then as I grew, I started becoming like both of their complexions together, okay. which is why I said I like being brown skin because I feel like I'm both my dad and my mom's complexion. Okay. Sure, yeah. Sure. I'm not trying to shit on like dark skin or super light skin. Yeah. You anyway, when I was growing, when I was growing up, um, there's a time where I wanted to be like mixed race. Really? Because girls, like dark skin girls, also, like there was this meme I saw where some guy was sitting on a lawn and he opened his legs and he captioned it when go when when Guzas see a light skin guy. Really? Yeah. I always thought it was the opposite. There's also the other side. A lot of girls, like especially like when I was like in high school and stuff, mm. when a light skinned guy passes like the curly hair or like if it's got yeah. hazel oh, eyes. Oh, I, I remember that face. You see, you were also colorist. No, I wasn't colorist. First you of were colorist. <laughs> Anyway, you can't be colorist to be at the same color as the nah, person you're attracted to. Uh, what, we need to find a term for people who treat their own people the way they're like xenophobic. Doing, yeah, something like that. Anyway, so there was a time like uh, if like a guy with like curly hair passes with like hazel eyes, girls are like cheering, you know. What I mean? But when like a, like a dark skinned guy is passing, it's like you know, and to a point where they would make fun of you, like that's why you're dark. Yeah, black. If we switch off the lights, we won't be able to see you. You we'll are under the bed. Yeah, we'll only see... You um, are at midnight, you are zero we'll three. only see your nails, we'll only see your teeth. So there was a time where... And there was this time where I was having this thing when I was in high school with like a colored girl. Like our personalities what? matched. It was when I was young. I can't believe you're with other people before me. That's I also can't believe on Lester's behalf. You guys, it's not about, it's can, not can, about wait. you. Wait. It's not about you. Can I finish I'm my so story? Sad. Can we just take a moment? It's not about me. you. This is my story. Take a moment to well, fear we're taking me, a moment. and gentlemen. Okay, you can continue. Yeah, anyway, you guys are so dramatic. But yeah, what happened was, like, it was this thing where our personalities were matching. You know what I mean? Like, I'd crack jokes and she would laugh at all my jokes in class and everything. And um, like she just enjoyed spending time with me. So now I started like trying to pursue her and like, you know, trying to like date her. You know You're gonna I mean? be the love of my Trying life. to finesse. And she was like rejecting and like hesitating. I was like, all right, cool. Then this colored guy came and like he didn't even waste time. It was like in a week, they were already spending time together. I was getting touched. We started dating. She even came and told me. First, she friend zoned me. Then she told me, like, yo, me and him are dating. Yo, and he was one of those you guys. You just a space holder. Yeah. Yo. He was one of those guys that when Shit. he passes, you know, girls, because he had green eyes. You know the color, like the colors, the mixed race with the green eyes. Like, yo, once they look into, like, a girl's eyes, hey, it's late. So I went through that phase where I was like, Ish, I wish I was um, lighter or I had, like, curly hair. So I started relaxing my hair. Like I said, I went Actually, through that phase. You know, I didn't bleach, but like yes, I started yes, relaxing started my bleaching. hair. I was trying to like, <laughs> you know, look a bit like, you it's know. It's so crazy that guys also uh, would go through such things. Yeah, it was very painful. And when I went through that experience, I started now even looking down on even anyone who looks darker skinned. You know what I mean? There's even a time I started like resenting my dad because he was dark and my, you've seen like my people in my mom's That's side. That's deep. super light. Shit, I started crazy. resenting him like, if, if he was light, like, yeah. I would have been light. Why did you? Oh. Then you go like, fight your grandfather. Then you go fight your grandfather. Then you go fight your grandfather. Then you go fight your grandfather's father. Yeah. Yo. And then like when I'm chilling with my cousins on my mom's side, like they're light, brown, light, light, yeah. light. I would, I would be like dark there and just feeling like ish girls like I'm not like and it made me very insecure with like my looks yeah. like I never used to like taking pictures I never used to like looking at myself Mixed because someone mirror. doesn't like taking the pictures there was a time we came from the trenches oh my god we came from the <laughs> trenches you know but then what helped me transition this is just to motivate any like anyone who's been through that is like just like my strengths, like the talent, the creativity, 
fashion and my personality is what really now I started seeing now even the light skin, bananas, dark skin, like whatever race, even even the Indians, like they started like enjoying my personality whenever I started embracing my strengths. And that's when I realized that it doesn't matter yeah. that uh, whether you are dark or light, it's about like internally so there are a lot of guys who also they don't like light-skinned girls like not like they don't want but like they just when they see a light-skinned girl it's like this one she's feeling entitled like yeah no she probably sure. gets too much attention yeah so she probably has too many expectations because she's light-skinned they she's resist also got too many niggas following yeah, too many her. niggas i don't want to deal with that you know yeah. what i mean so yeah there's also the guy side of the story um, I do agree that there are preferences, right? Um, personally, I don't have a type. But um, the, it's, it's okay for someone to say, I'm attracted to dash, dash, dash. It's like you won't be everyone's cup of tea. As long as it's not coming from a place of, like, prejudice. Is, 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 is that, d yeah. Does that mean what I'm trying to make it mean? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. prejudice is not too far off to describe you don't even do you, okay what does prejudice mean i think when whenever people i don't know the the dictionary definition but whenever people talk about prejudice it's a situation where you are segregating yes a, a different people based off it's of a, like a, a personal pr preference specific to you based on a group of people yeah and then you start you undermine oh, them yes, because yeah, of yeah, that yeah. So that's I what I like understand the, by prejudice. Are you trying to think it's 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 down? It's it. Yeah. Nice, baby. Nice. Look at you. Look at you knowing the things. Look at you being the big man. Wow. Anyway, as I was saying, I think it's okay to have a type, right? But when you start thinking, oh, no, I want you to be with a light-skinned guy because, like, dark-skinned guys are yuck, that, that, that's when the problem comes in. Yeah. But, you know, it's crazy that you told your story. Like, the whole time I've always been like, ah. I've heard, oh, I can't be with a light-skinned guy. Like, it's a black man. Like, do you know a black man? Wait, I, Paul, like, I don't why are you asking me if I know a black no, man? No, it's not you. But, like, I'm just saying that that's why people tell me, like, I'm imagining you're one of my girlfriends. Yeah. So I'm just saying it's, like, it's, it's crazy because um, that you would go through such an experience. Meaning, like, you know, um, no matter what side of the table you are on, Especially in experience. high school, yeah. when you don't know who you are, you're yeah. trying to find yourself. Your teens, guys, your yeah. teens are confusing. Bruh, I, I, confusing. I wouldn't want to go back. I wouldn't want to go back. If you ever honest. ask, guys, me, I believe fully in the frontal cortex thing. The theory, it's not a theory, it's, it's a fact. The f um, when you are at the age of 22, mm -hmm. you start to develop, I don't know, 22, you're 21. You start to develop something in your brain called the frontal cortex okay. that helps you decide between what's right, what's wrong. You actually now have so it's not a 18. More, no, it's not 18. You actually have a more um, more awareness of decisions that you make and things like that. First of all, you always have a frontal cortex, but no, but it's development. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Right. So like men, like that's when your brain starts developing. Or the, yes, the, the that's why they tell you. The frontal cortex of your brain starts developing. Yes, okay. it, it it that muscle starts to be exercised more. It, within, the, within this age. Wait, she's, she's, she's reacting sorry, because no. she's doing medicine. What's the no, problem? No, sorry. Just sorry. okay, we no, know. Just yeah, say, no, correct me if I'm no, wrong. No, the brain is not a muscle. I'm just saying. It's, it's neural no, tissue. It's, it's yeah. not muscle. But okay, like, don't tell our face I that for my question. I don't mean like sorry. a muscle as in like, oh, I'm lifting it. But you know, like, even like, if okay. you use your, the right side of your brain more, then it will have more dominance over the left side, isn't it? Isn't that a fact? Okay, I think let's just move. Like, like if, if you're, you're a creative, creative person, person, or if you're... Yeah, true. I think... Person. Do you understand what she's saying? Like I do understand. Like, if you're a creative person, yeah. and let's say there's a part in your brain that, like... Um, Sugar's creativity. That works creativity. If you're exercising I that... I think you already have one that's more dominant. It's not like you can... Shoot. Okay, but anyway... I, I no, I think also, like, you know you're multi-talented, so it could be a situation yeah. where yes. there's different well, parts We're discussing colorism, guys. What are the voices that <laughs> true, true, true. about the brain and who knows what? He, it's... But yeah, we, anyway. we know it. Anyway, but at the, that point, point, did you ever is... feel like bleaching your skin? No, ah, bleach, like, I was scared that, like, my anxiety was just yeah, making me... 
my anxiety made me feel like something would react and then like my skin would start peeling off so not bleaching but there was a time where i started drinking more water and there was i i, I actually googled like how to become lighter and they said put potato peels on your face so i started putting potato peels and you know what hurt? I was dating a girl and I told her I want to become light. And she was like, yes! Yes! <laughs> like, you should. Like, drink more water. Do this. Put this. Like, put like she said, like, lemons Maybe and she stuff. was talking about skincare. No. Maybe she was. Because that sounds like skincare. Nah, but she was telling me things I should do to become light. So was and she, she was excited was she to also see light? me as, like, a lighter person. Was she light? Nah, she wasn't. So, where is this advice coming from? Maybe she wanted a light-skinned guy because, like I'm saying, a lot of dark-skinned girls, they also idolize, like, you know, light-skinned guys. I think it. I've heard that saying, no, I need to be with a white man or a light man so that I can have nice babies like you. Yeah. I've heard that before and I'm just like, yeah, always thinking about the offspring. Breeding. I don't, I, I don't know. Like you're breeding say. dogs, so and I'm like, no, me, 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 I want to teach you. I don't, I don't know what me, to me, say. Me, me, I want a pit bull, so I have to find another pit bull. So. Sad. So now I just want to talk about like your character in Tilu, okay. briefly. Like how there's that stereotype. That character came from a place of the stereotype of like colored girls have like attitude. They're aggressive. You know, they're disrespectful. They like fighting. So. What would you say about that stereotype? Is it really accurate or do you think it's just a stereotype? Before I go there, don't, don't you like women that are a little crazy? How do you, like, from a guy's perspective, maybe not in the you bedroom. specifically. Yeah, only in the bedroom. Only the bedroom. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. Anywhere else, like, just be a normal human. Being. Anyway, so, I feel like I've heard people like, oh no, like, you know, like you need a girl that's a little spicy, a girl that's a little psycho to keep things interesting. I don't know like how that plays out. I've seen like um, some people in my lifetime, in my family, who are a bit like typical of that. So I think that's why it was easy for me to, to tap into that character. But what was the question? The character, do you feel like that is an accurate, it's an accurate, that character is accurate towards like colored girls? Oh, it's just a stereotype. Because when I, when, I, when I created the character, I, I'm, I'm just leaving it open to interp interpretation. You were doing so well. It's that one. Chizungo. It, it anyway, grabbed you. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like it's, it's I'm not a, saying it is or it's not, but I'd like to know what people think. I feel like it's a stereotype, you know? I do. And like that's Rochelle, guys. Rochelle is mad. <laughs> I feel like it's a stereotype. I feel like even no. dark-skinned girls can be crazy, you know? It's just... True. I don't know. Like, I just feel like maybe it's more publicized for, like, light-skinned girls. Like, that's the story that's been told. But I can't say, like, I've experienced it, like, more with light-skinned people than dark-skinned people because I've met, like, some crazy dark-skinned babes. So I don't think, like... Whether you have less melanin, that would directly translate to the fact that you will be psychotic, you know. I feel like it is definitely the stereotype. I don't think that is the reality. But again, it's not like I interact with a lot of colored people. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask. I think, I think it's a culture thing. Yeah. Because um, in the colored community... Everybody in the family is allowed to be expressive. So when you're expressing, even the language is quite vulgar sometimes, but I'm not going to say like, <laughs> you, you, effing, 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 effing. <laughs> Let me just say, you fucking, fucking. Bloody. You bloody fucking, fucking. So even, you can be having a normal conversation with colored people. And you think, if, if you're somebody who's conservative, you'd be like, ha, ah, this person can insult it's but it's just like, it's not even for the bands. It's just like the way people express themselves oh, in, in that specific community. So you would think that maybe like, for example, like when a, when a colored woman is being aggressive. I mean, there's also been conversations of how it's, it's aggressive when a black woman is talking or when she takes charge of a position yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. It's, just, it's the same idea, even with any woman, to be honest with you, yeah. no matter what but color you are. When you, when you take charge of position, because... Like, a lot of women, I feel like we tend to keep quiet. But when we now are like, hey, 
What you talking about? I'm not gonna deal with this right now. What? Okay, okay, and you're like, okay. <laughs> then you're like, ah, that's scary. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. But that I feel like it's just a woman thing. When a woman is expressing herself and she's been quiet for a long time, it also depends on what the situation is. Maybe she's not crazy. Yeah, I also agree with what you said in conclusion that, um, yeah, I've also, when I think about it, I've also seen some really crazy, even black American, like women and girls, you know what I mean? Like really Taraji, aggressive, like yeah. Taraji, you know what I mean? Media type. For sure. Aggression. Even so I in feel South like. Africa, some people are crazy. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen any. Okay, I haven't seen any Asian, like maybe like towards like Chinese, Korean, Japanese, but like the, we don't know, we don't on, know. On the culture. Yeah. On the culture. So I like, think with the colored community, it's very common, even with guys, like, you know, like aggression and being like the high yeah. energy. Yeah. So I think that's what it is. But I don't think it's really about like color. Like, even like, even in Zambia, there's some like really like she's just like dark skinned, black Zambian woman. And she's really aggressive. I mean, look what's happening outside Dikapo these days. Yeah. Every weekend there's a fight. Yo, outside. you know that fight? Have, you, have you seen that bullying. fight? That fight where there's like, she looks like Armenian, like she's super like, she looks like Armenian. Yeah, like, yeah I think I And see. then there's a dark, like, skin, like, chubby um, girl. And then there's another, like, Sorry, if it was you, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry, but it was entertaining. Yeah, this don't fight though. But each other's hair, like, yo, there wasn't even this thing. Like, this aggression one doesn't have a race. Did I show you that video? I posted it on my <laughs> WhatsApp story. I was like, yo, guys, the couple we lead. But anyway, anyway, guys, in conclusion, this was just a conversation about colorism. And um, colorism was one of the themes of this is Osaka. This is a more in depth discussion about. All these stereotypes. I think we've covered at least a good 85, 90%. No, I think we've covered a lot actually. So I hope people can understand. People were very confused asking what colorism is. But this, like these conversations we've had, like touches on all parts of colorism as a guy, as a girl, light skin, dark skin, uh, even of different races. So hope you guys enjoyed. Anyway, guys, uh, make sure to uh, subscribe, share, like, comment what you think about colorism, what you understand, your experiences. Can you relate with all the stories we told? Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a vibe. This is our podcast, your podcast, my podcast. This is our podcast. Our so. podcast.